Semantics-based compilation is um, the process of taking a programming language semantics and generating a compiler from it. What does that mean? So you take the semantics and a program in that language for which you have the semantics. And now the tool, the SBC tool, generates a new semantics, which is a synthesis of the original semantics for the particular program. It's like instantiating the semantics of the, let's say, C. Take the C language, right? You have a C program, a C semantics and a C program, and now you generate another semantics, which is very specialized for that particular program. Uh, it um, it uh, summarizes the semantics of uh, blocks, let's say, in the C program, or the semantics of while loops, conditional statements, into new constructs with new semantics. And you'll have a semantics which is much simpler and therefore much faster to execute and to reason about. But the drawback of this is, is that it is specialized for your program. It doesn't work with any other program except to your program, with your program. Uh, this is, is a mini sense to, to what people in the functional program community call partial evaluation. When you take a function, it has several arguments and some of the arguments are known. Then you can partially evaluate the function to inline the effects of those arguments that are known. Something similar, but one level higher. Uh, you do it with formal semantics of languages. Um, so you have the semantics and now the input is the program and you now specialize the semantics for that particular program and you get another semantics. And now you have another semantics in K, and you can use your uh, backends, uh, in particular our Yele backend, and this way you get a Yele binary for a particular program generated completely automatically based on the semantics of, uh, of the programming language that you want to compile to Yele. For example, if your program is in Solidity, what we do, we take the Solidity semantics, we plug it into the SBC tool, and now we take a Solidity program, and what you get out of the SBC tool is um, uh, first another case semantics, if you care about that, and you do care about that for other uh, purposes like verification, and then from that you get a yellow binary that you can execute on various, um, on various um, 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 uh, clients, in particular on the client that is completely generated automatically from the, from the YLA semantics. Yeah, so that's what SBC is. Uh, in short, um, it's, um, it's um, a tool that takes a K, one of the tools in the K uh, suite that takes a semantics and the program generates another semantics which then generates <coughs> a binary in Yele based on the, on the uh, Yele backend of K. And that works for any language now for which you have uh, formal semantics. So that's the, that's the idea of SBC, to be able to write smart contracts in any programming language for which you have a formal semantics. The vision here is that you can put a programming language semantics on the blockchain and then you can write programs in that programming language um, by simply referring to that language and, and, and SBC will grab the language from, 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 uh, from the account and, and uh, it will generate then the binary, the LA binary, which is then put into the, into the, uh, the, smart, it, it is the smart contract that now you want to, to execute. Well, so the alternative to SBC would be to write the compilers by hand for your language. Um, and uh, we know that, we know how to do that. That's what uh, the programming language community has been doing for uh, many, many generations. The problem with that is, uh, as we know, that compilers have bugs. Um, and uh, and the, the, these bugs in compilers are very, very problematic. Because you, as a developer, write a program and you think the program does something, and then you compile it, you get a binary, and that binary does, some, does something else. For example, you may reorder uh, the operations in your program. You may have A minus C plus B and you think that you wrote it in that smart way to avoid an overflow and then the compiler may reverse, it may, may reorder the instructions to A plus B minus C and you have an overflow on A plus B and your program is suddenly wrong. But if you look at the original program, uh, the original program was just fine in your mind as a programmer, but the compiler <laughs> introduced um, the error. Um, so that's one thing. Then um, also languages we tend to think that Java is a programming language and uh, that's it. But actually there are lots of Java programming languages. There is Java 1.4, Java 5, 6, 7, 9, and so on. And Solidity actually changes every week almost. So who keeps updating all this and who makes sure that there are no errors uh, generated? 
So the advantage of the SBC uh, approach is that you have a formal semantics of your language or version of your language, and then you get a correct by construction compiler for your language at the push of a button. So that saves all the hard work uh, needed to implement compilers. And, um, and um, um, this is uh, a major step ahead. S SBC gives us the peace of mind that programs are compiled correctly. Um, also, it gives us the possibility to experiment with language design. As we know, in the blockchain space, there are lots of different approaches, lots of different languages uh, based on different approaches uh, to implement uh, smart contracts, each of them thinking that it is safer, more secure, and so on than, than, than others. Um, so what SBC does for you here, uh, it saves you from implementing compilers and thus introducing bugs in compilers for all these languages. It could be that actually the blockchain space uh, sees um, proliferation of languages at a much higher speed than any other um, field before. So that makes SBC um, even more important in this, in this space, exactly for this reason. Implementing a correct compiler is not an easy job. Um, implementing any compiler, actually, is not an easy job. Um, very, very uh, few are trained or um, can implement correct compilers. Generating them automatically from uh, formal specifications um, will at least speed up the design and hopefully uh, will help us design better languages faster than, um, than in the past. So I think, I think the blockchain space in particular is, um, is um, uh, quite uh, suitable for, um, um, as, a, as an application of, of, of SBC, which is why we wanted to develop SBC for this, this uh, space. So SBC as a, as a principle, as an approach, has nothing to do with YELL in particular. SBC is very general. It takes a language semantics in K. It's all about K, actually. It takes a language semantics in K, takes a program in K, and gives you another language semantics in K. Which means that you can now generate interpreters for the language for which you have a semantics in K in any language for which you have a backend to K. In particular, we have a backend, a Yale backend for K, which means that we can do SBC for Yale. And since we also generated the entire Yale virtual machine from the formal specification of Yale using the LLVM backend of K, now we can take the SBC generated Yale programs and run them on the automatically generated Yale virtual machine. So you have Yale at two different uh, levels here, both of them um, um, related. And, and, and uh, through this connection, we can now write smart contracts in any programming language and have a correct by construction compiler to Yale. That is the connection. There is no difference, really, for developers. Um, for developers, SBC will be like any other compiler. Um, they will just um, have their programming in Solidity or Plutus, um, and, um, and then uh, they will compile. They will call the compile command, um, like isolc, for example, uh, for Solidity, and compile to Yale. Um, everything happens under the hood. Right, so um, a few months back, we only had um, um, SBC working for some toy languages. And the reason was because we didn't have the actual semantics of languages like uh, Solidity and Plutus. We were working on, on the semantics of these languages. Now we have the semantics and, uh, of these languages, both Plutus and, uh, and, and Solidity. And um, the SBC framework itself has been uh, significantly improved, and now uh, we can literally have SBC for Solidity and Plutus. I believe that um, SBC can completely change the way we implement programming languages overall, not only on the blockchain. Because it eliminates the need to implement ad hoc compilers. 
and optimizations in compilers. All this can be done generically in a framework and then reused across all the different languages. And then people, all, everything will be open uh, source and in the public domain. And enthusiasts can contribute to SBC, can contribute with optimizations, with um, ideas. And this way, SBC, the SBC tool will become more and more powerful to generate more and more optimal code. And, um, and that will benefit all programming languages at the same time. What happens now is that people implement ad hoc compilers for each programming language and they redo the same work over and over again in different settings, uh, which uh, in my view is at best uh, uneconomical and a waste of, uh, of uh, talent. I believe that we should implement all these optimizations into one place, into an SBC-like tool, and then um, apply it across all the languages. Just take the language as input, plug and play your language and get the best compiler for your language, which is also correct by construction. So regarding the future of SBC, to be very successful, we have uh, to overcome two major problems. One is performance. The current performance is acceptable, but in order to compete with uh, handcrafted compilers, we have to improve the performance. Uh, more. And another um, 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 area of, of, of work needed is automation. We still have to annotate the semantics of various places, telling it where SBC should do its uh, magic. Um, all those places can be, in principle, detected, detected automatically in the specification, but right now we have to annotate by hand. So it's not as easy as just taking a specification and plugging it into the SBC and you get a, 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 a compiler. You still have to do a bit of work. You have to spend like a morning or so for a language um, trying to adjust uh, the semantics to work with the SBC. So I hope that uh, soon, <laughs> a matter of months, we'll get to a point where we can literally take a semantics and automatically generate the SBC uh, from it. And when that happens, I think SBC will have a great future because it can literally mean that compilers, as we know them today, are not needed anymore. Could be the beginning of the end of compilers as we know them.